Hello and welcome to Inside Katana on Trust TV. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Now, earlier, we had the pleasure of speaking with Mustafa Mohammed Inua, the former secretary to the government of Katana State, where he gave us an insight into the inner workings of government under the leadership of His Excellency Governor Aminu Bella Masari who despite the numerous challenges led by huge financial constraints, was able to effectively steer the affairs of the state and make giant strides in the areas of infrastructural development, agriculture, education and health, which has made Katsina the envy of many across the country. Now, in the concluding part of our interview, we asked the former SSG how he would rate the performance of this administration based on what they have been able to achieve so far, in spite of the monumental challenges they faced in the areas of revenue generation and security. Now, he stressed the need for all hands to be on deck to ensure the overall development of society. Let's take a look. You see, one, still we feel, uh, that yes, we have done the best we can under the situation we find ourselves. And the good thing is that the people of Katana appreciate what we have been able to do. This is very clear when you come to the second term election. The first election, uh, our governor performed, yes, very well. You, score, you got uh, uh, close a million votes. But the second uh, election, you got over one million. The whole country had the highest uh, vote. So it shows that despite the limitations we had, the people of Katana appreciate what we have been able to do. One, we run an open government. We bring all stakeholders on anything. If it is on education, if it is on religion, if it is on anything, we discuss with them, we give them two situation of, of things. That is why we have no issues with labor. You can see even the negotiation for the new minimum wage didn't take us more than three days to conclude because we are frank and open with them. I chair that committee as well. So it was something, you see, we, op we have an open door government. Our governor is accessible, so also we who are supporting him, we listen to people, we attend to them, we tell them position, position of things they appreciate. So although we had wanted to do much more, we understand, but like you said, because of the financial constraint, which is not only national but global, which is not everybody, you understand, the federal government is suffering the same, so other, in fact many states can't even pay salary the way we do, but here we hardly pay salary uh, uh, after, in, in another month, we always pay our salary within the month. In fact, it used to be on the 25th of every month or, or before. But now, whatever it is, we don't wait for the Federation account to pay salary because we make sure that every month we have at least one month's salary uh, ready and available. You understand? So that is critical. Although you may say the, those who earn salary, uh, in terms of numerical things, I know many, but you just don't look at it that way. Quite all right, both the civil servants of state and local government, in the whole current state, we are not up to 40,000. And we use almost, at one time, more than 60, 70% of what comes from the federation account to pay salary. But what you should understand, mm. quite, Katana is a civil service state. You understand that until when you go to the market. Go to the market before salary is paid. Go to the market when salary is paid and see. And moreover, you should understand every salary earner has averagely a family, maybe or 35 or whatever. And also, after getting the salary, he goes to the market, he buys food stuff, he pays his rent, he pays school fees, he pays this and that. So many people get from this salary. I hope you understand. So we are able to maintain that. We are able, like I said, to maintain pension. Many states don't pay pensioners. In fact, I know of a state that for the last seven years, they have not paid one person gratuity. One person have not been paid gratuity. I know this. I know of a state where people, they don't even talk about gratuity. They don't even talk about pension. They leave jobs, they leave jobs, that is all. Many of them die. 
Well, there was a dire of frustration. But here we are able to make sure that artillery salary is paid, pension is paid, and gradually we are paying gratuity. And we are also paying you a gratuity 100%. Unlike what happened in other places, if you are supposed to get maybe 2 million naira, you will be given 300,000 this time around. After uh, uh, another period, you'll be given another 300 or two. So you see, before you can even get the money. But here we pay you 100% so that you can use it to do something for your uh, life, for your family and, and so on. So we really have been able to, to maintain that and still, like I say, do quite a number of capital projects despite the constraint we have financial. Uh, when we realize the financial situation, the last budget we did, we decided unless it is absolutely necessary, there wouldn't be new projects. And moreover, the administration is coming to an end. So we are working towards completing ongoing projects. Unless, like I said, it is extremely necessary. We don't want to embark on new projects. We are struggling to complete the ongoing one so that the incoming administration may not inherit, inherit uh, a lot of unfinished projects. You know, government, we know it's a continuous thing. So that no way you can say, okay, I have finished my own 100%. We also inherited, we finished a lot of projects where we inherited, some up to 70%, some 30%, especially on roads and other things, because uh, we feel it is for the people of Kasana. So the same thing, we expect the incoming government to inherit uh, uncompleted, unfinished projects, but, but we don't want to be so much. So honestly, we try to restrain ourselves from uh, bringing out uh, new projects. Federation funding is not very reliable now. And you cannot even, if you cannot continue to run government just by mere payment of salaries and so on. So that is critical. Then you have to address the issue of youth and employment. You see all this criminality that we are complaining and talking about in the cities and the villages and so on, largely are caused by these youth who are unemployed, who are just roaming the street around. You get the point. Then you have to look at the educational system. It really needs to be rebuilt. Mm. You see. I, we cannot continue. Incidentally, I was Commissioner of Education during Eredos period. Then we had money. Mm. We were able to do a lot of things. As a Commissioner, I could take decisions, do things to improve on things that we realized needed, needed to be improved. But we cannot continue doing things the same way. And we expect different results. We are growing as a people. Our population is fast increasing. You understand? I believe you know that the way we are moving, we are growing, we are expanding is very alarming. Unfortunately, we are not doing anything. We have no plan for this population approaching our experience, especially here in the North. Mm -hmm. Kazani in particular, because that we are talking about. Now it is said to be Kazani were about 8 million. How many were we 20, 30 years back? Well, now we are about 8 million people. What percentage do we have as youth? Education must be full responsibility of government. It's not done anywhere. You have to be realistic. You see, our problem with politicians is that we don't want to take policies that initially you look unpopular because of the election, because we don't want to be accused, we don't want the opposition to use it against us. But what it is the right thing to do, especially if it's for the future, you, 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 you go ahead and do it. You understand? Mm. 
You see, we rely, everyone will tell you, free education, employment, guaranteed employment, primary school to secondary school, secondary school to tertiary institutions. And then when they graduate, they want to be employed. But like I said earlier, how much do we generate from such people? How much? And you fold your arms. You want government to do everything for people are asking uh, payment of wayek fees. Parents wants government to pay for their wayek fees for Neko. We have a lot of out of school children because we cannot afford to get them into schools. Because we rely 90% or 99% on public schools. How many private schools do you have? How many community schools do you have? What contribution people, especially those in authority, those blessed with resources and so on, what have they done to assist the locals, their communities, including the primary or secondary school they even attended? Additional classroom, facilities, how many? We don't do that here. So education is key. And it has to, there must be a radical departure from the system we're doing. It may not be at the beginning, people will not be happy. But we believe it's something that we must do. Otherwise, we'll continue to see a battalion of youth unemployed, roaming around. Once you are not educated, you can't get something, anything good doing. So the upbringing also will certainly be affected. So that's why they are into drugs, they are into criminalities and so on. And unfortunately, like I said, we are growing by the day. See this animal roaming the street, very small. What is their future? What do they get? What do they do? So we have fundamental issues here. And all of us, not only the politicians, the, the, the religious leaders, the traditional rulers, everybody is involved. The parents at home. You just don't think that you are, you are given a birth, a baby, let him go to, then the government should take everything. You go to the hospital, you want to be given free drugs. You want to be given free consultation and so on. You go to school, you want your child to be given everything free. It used to be so before. You understand. But things have changed. They cannot, it cannot continue like this. Indeed. Governance and societal development should be everyone's business, as no government can go at it alone. It needs the support and cooperation of the citizenry in order to succeed. We'll take a break now, and when we return, Inside Katana continues.
Welcome back. You're still watching Inside Katsuna on Trust TV. And we're still speaking to Mustafa Mohamed Inwa, the erstwhile secretary to the Katsuna state government, as he outlines the successes recorded by the Masari administration. We then asked the former SSG what subsequent administrations need to do to ensure all the gains already recorded are not wasted. Any government that is coming must take drastic measures. That, like I say, initially, we have problems with people. But that is leadership. You are not supposed to think of pleasing everybody. No. What is most important is have issues, have policies that will have, we see we are talking about years to come. Leadership is not only for the present people who elected whoever is coming. No, it is for generations to come. Whatever you do good will have, will affect many generations to come. The same thing if you do contrary. Now we benefit from what our leaders some even before we are born, did. You understand? Also, this thing we are suffering, especially this criminality we are talking about, and this issue of uh, funding, is not the creation of yesterday or the day before yesterday. It was lack of planning, lack of care, lack of concern by some leaders back who didn't take that as an issue. There was a time in Nigeria when a leader of Nigeria, head of state, was saying, Nigeria, our problem was not money, but what we do with money. That's when we're paying salaries of other African countries. We are constructing roads for other African countries. But we didn't plan for what of Nigeria when oil is no longer a marketable commodity. We didn't plan for that. Now it is affecting us. When this issue started, conflict, it started as conflict between Fulani and farmers. I was secretary to the government during uh, the gym. That was the big the, the crisis. Just Fulani and farmers crisis. It started like that. Unfortunately, the authorities didn't bother to sanction, to punish those found guilty either the Fulanis or the farmers. People started taking laws into their hands. If the Fulani man invaded your farm, you trace him, you kill his cow, you sometimes even you, 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 you injure him or you kill him. So it started like that. So had it been, measures were taken to address the issues squarely. It wouldn't have escalated into this position. So the point I'm trying to make is that you see, things happen depending on how the leaders of that particular time address and handle the situation, it may lead into another thing else. So we need leaders, we need people who will stand by what they believe is in the best interest of the people, not necessarily now, but in future. That is why you need to have forecast possible leaders who can foresee, who can talk of 20, 30, 50 years. What happened? What will be the situation? Like I said, we are increasing tremendously. In the next 30 years, let me tell you, Nigeria it will, is said to be the, will be the fourth country in the world in terms of population. And most of this will be in the north, because that is why you have Mustafa, Isa, Abdu, who have four, three, two, Wives with 10, 20, uh, 27, 30, 30, 35, even 50. I know somebody with 70 children. You understand? That's why you have the population. And that is why we are poor. Because most of us, we have more responsibility than our earning. An average northerner, his responsibility are much more than his earning. You find a driver earning 30, 35,000 naira, let's say even 50, with 27, 30 children, three wives. I know of a youth here who sells pura, this Puran blender. He has three wives, 17 children. In his house alone, 
there are 21. And he relies on from Belanda. This you, you, you put in Belanda, I think if, I, if is it 50 Naira or 100 Naira, people take it. To tell me, how can that person educate his children? How can that person feed his children? How can that person even provide the basics for his children? We have to face the reality. So we are becoming poorer by the day because we are expanding our population with our commensurate means of taking care of this family. You can find a senior officer. Like I said, I have only four children. But I believe my elderly my old has about uh, 17. So, so you, you understand. Uh, there was a time my PA, my driver, my elderly, the three of them have 54 children. Three of them. And all of them are between the ages of 45 down. So here in the north, we need leaders who will look at some of these issues and find a way out. Once we always want to bury this, we turn our eyes against this. Believe you me, we will continue to have this problem. And we are not helping the situation. We are not helping our children and grandchildren because we are only going to transfer to them all these problems that we are supposed to address now. Foresight, determination, administrative shrewdness and financial responsibility are qualities required to have a successful tenure in government. And these are qualities that have definitely been on display in the administration of Governor Aminu Bella Masari in Katsina State. And the successes are there for all to see. This is how we come to the end of this episode of Inside Katsina on Trust TV. Join us again as we delve into another sector undergoing monumental changes driven by the administration of Governor Aminu Bella Mosari. Until then, I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for joining us.